in first chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32 very instructive scripture there first chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32 first chronicles 12 and 32 the bible says and of the children of issachar which were men that had understanding of the times take note now not just understanding of the things they were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. The Bible says the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. Write this down if you're writing. God is a God of times and seasons. This is a very simple but profound truth that as mighty as God is, he has chosen to operate with man within the frame of times and seasons. Say times, times and seasons. One more time, say times, times and seasons. Human activities also happen within the frame of times and seasons. Are we together now? That means nothing happens on earth until a time is allotted to it. Are we together? God is a God of times and seasons. Human activities happen within the frame of times and seasons. There's no time we would have looked at Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. Very popular scripture. It talks about a time for several things. In fact, it says to everything. To how many things? Everything. That includes your breakthrough. To everything. That includes your lifting. To everything. That includes your rising, your shining. It says to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the earth. Can you imagine that? Very instructive statement. So it is not enough to know what needs to happen in your life. You must also understand divine timings. There are people who have found God's purpose for them but they still have not been able to manifest it because purpose did not coincide with time. You would hear the prophets who say, according to the time of life. Hallelujah. Now, for the purpose of our discussion tonight, there are many words that are translated time as we have in the Bible, but two of them are my concern as far as our discussion uh, is tonight. Number one is called chronos c-h-r-o-n-o-s is called chronos chronos means sequential time time as we know to measure moments so chronos is a word that is translated time it means the passage of time like minutes hour seconds that is chronos are we together now that is the first word that I want us to consider, sequential time. When you talk about chronos, you mean time as it is passing in seconds, in minutes, in hours, in days, in months, in years. But the second word that I want us to look at and that forms the basis for my discussion tonight is called kairos, K-A-I-R-O-S. One more time. K-A-I-R-O-S. This is the second word that is translated time. Kairos means opportune time. Opportune time, it means defining seasons. Kairos means an opportune time, defining seasons. You just write them and I will explain that to you. Kairos. Now please look up. Say, for instance, a student is in school, secondary school. JS1, JS2, JS3, you can call that chronos. That is time passing. But there are moments in that student's life where if he fails a particular exam, he will not go forward. Am I, am I right on that? There's his junior YEC, as we know, and then the senior YEC. That student can afford to toy around with first term, second term, but once he's writing his final exam, he's in a Kairos moment. You get the point now? These are moments that if you miss them, it will take the grace of God. Listen, in every man's life, 
There are these moments of chronos every day, but there are prophetic moments called kairos. And if you do not know how to maximize that time, imagine that Joseph missed that opportunity to stand before Pharaoh. That was a kairos moment. Are we together now? This is very important. So remember I said that God operates based on times and seasons and that human activities operate within the frame of times and seasons and that we have time as we know as chronos the passage of time and kairos defining you may even want to call them prophetic seasons in a man's life i give you an example in john chapter 5 there was a man who lay at a pool called bethesda is that in your bible and the Bible says that at a particular time, that is chronos, not every time, a particular time, the angel would come to stir the water and whoever was the first to jump into it, that person would be healed of whatever infirmity. There was a man there who stayed for 38 years. The problem of that man was not ignorance. He knew that the activity of the angel on the water could heal. But the problem is that he did not know how to connect knowledge to timing. Listen carefully. He had knowledge. He was not in ignorance. And yet, one year became 10 years. I'm sure he said after 15 years, I'll be fine. 15 years became 20 years, became 30 years, became 38 years of affliction without ignorance he had knowledge from day one when jesus came and met him and said will thou be made whole he said listen you don't understand uh every time i want to step in the problem is not knowledge is that i always miss the timing and missing the timing makes my knowledge look useless because my knowledge is not able to profit me because it does not coincide with timing are we together now, someone who does not even know that that water should heal, if he's able to move in first, everybody say first. first. Say first. first. That's the rendition in John 5. It was not about who was more knowledgeable. It was about who could maximize time. Anyone who could jump in first, the Bible says that person was healed. And for 38 years, a man who was full of knowledge but did not understand that the dealings of God with men works within times and seasons. Tonight I'm revealing to you why many of you know so many spiritual things and yet your life may not seem to make progress. The problem is not ignorance. The problem is you have not known how to merge knowledge with timing. Hallelujah. Write this down. There is a dimension of grace and beauty that is attached to every season. There is a dimension of grace and beauty that is attached to every season. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11. Please give it to us. I want you to understand my teaching tonight. The Bible says he hath made how many things? Please look up. He had made everything or all things beautiful, not at every time. Everything is not beautiful at every time. It's beautiful in his time. So beauty and grace is also connected to timing. Please look up. How many of you have seen a tree grow and blossom and then bear fruits that you later would eat? Did you know that sometimes when you look at the fruit that someday you'll be paying money for, there's nothing that looks like beauty and glory there because the time has not reached. For instance, an orange. For instance, a mango tree. For instance, a purple tree or avocado. Sometimes when you see those fruits in their formative seasons, they are not attractive in fact you will pass them with such disdain but give them time something begins to happen with time listen carefully and then the tree you once ignored now you can stand in front of that tree 
Tom would employ all kinds of skills. They would climb the tree. They would use sticks to pluck down whatever. Something, time, now made that thing become beautiful. Hallelujah. Have you tried to pluck mango that is not ripe and then try to bite and eat it? You will end up being angry with that initiative you took. Am I right on that? But if you are patient and you watch a juicy red or yellow mango, you pull it down and you enjoy it, you can turn it into whatever it is. The Bible says he makes all things beautiful. That means if someone looks at you and says your life is full of shame, just tell him, give me something is happening. Ah, I know I am praying and it does not look like there is profit in my prayer. I am studying. I have not yet evolved to that version of me. Just give me time. The Bible says, and Jesus increased. It is a function of time in wisdom. Are we together? In stature, in favor with God and with men. If you looked at the baby in a manger, you would, not want, you would not believe that that baby in the manger would one day become the savior. If you looked at the teenager, you would, the teenager could not call other people and say, come follow me. No, nobody would follow that teenager. But with time, hallelujah, time is powerful. Time is a mystery. Did you know that when a woman gives birth, or has her child come out and it is not time. You don't call it delivery. There is another name you call it. Not because what came out was not a child. But it came out not according to time. Am I right on that? So time can even define the names of things. That one moment you are praying, let this baby not come out. I thought the baby was supposed to come out one day. The problem was not the baby. The problem was time. And then another day comes and you are praying and say, Lord, it must be today. This baby must come out now. It says, thou shall arise and have mercy on Zion. It says, because the, the person who is praying that prayer took time to understand times. The problem was not the prayer request. The problem was timing. It says, Lord, I have such, I know something about you. It is the season where you arise and you have mercy upon Zion. And he gives him the reason why. He said, for the time to favor her, yea, the Kairos time. The time to favor her. The time to lift this family. The time to roll away their shame. The time to give them a new name. He says, yea, the set time has come. So a father buys a car. And intends to give his son one day. But he refuses to give that son. No matter how that son cries. Until he gets to a, a stage called 18. Say time. And the same boy who was struggling for that car. The father would call him of his own volition. And say gentlemen you are of age now. You are of age. An heir as long as he's a child. He says he differed not from a slave. But he be under, I mean, even though he be Lord of all, but he's under tutors until the time appointed. Can you imagine that? That Jesus himself, as he walked upon the earth, the father never made any proclamation upon him. Not because he was not Jesus, he was waiting for a particular time. It was until Jesus got to age 30, then he went to John, being baptized of John. The Bible says he came out of the waters and the heavens were open. And God said, this is my beloved son. Question, what was he before? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Kairos moments. Kairos moments. There are many, many people who do not understand. Listen, I have watched people who are destined for greatness. Pay the price to get knowledge. But they do not know that there is timing. And listen to me. Do you know these Kairos moments I'm talking about? In a man's entire lifetime, you may not have more than 10 of these seasons. Believe me when I tell you this. 10 of these seasons in your entire lifetime. So when you find those who you call great, 
it is not just a function of knowledge alone. It is that by the mercies of God or by the privilege of mentorship, they have been taught like the sons of Issachar to discern times. The Bible says, and of the children of Issachar, men who had an understanding of the time. The wise men in the Bible, the Magi, what made them wise? Their ability to use the constellations to understand time. When they saw a star, other people would say, wow, the earth is so bright. And those guys said, no, this is a signification that something is happening. A Messiah is born. Let's go and check the archives. And they checked it. They said, no, we will go and look for him. Hallelujah. Say seasons say time hmm. this is very powerful time is so important the bible tells us in psalm 90 and verse 12 give it to us please psalm 90 and verse 12 it says so teach us to number our days why that we may apply our hearts to wisdom there is a relationship between wisdom and time that when a man does not understand that life is a function of times and seasons there is a level of wisdom that does not happen in the life of that man is someone learning already John chapter 9 and verse 4 please pay attention I want to establish a few things John 9 and verse 4 Jesus is speaking and he said I must walk the works of him that sent me when anytime Jesus himself said, my assignment, as much as I know my assignment, I understand that there is a timing component. While it is day, someone say, while it is day. Now, while it is day, for the night cometh. I must establish that relationship while it is day, for the night cometh. I must invest in prayer now before I have... I start having children for the night comet. I may not have the liberty that I have now as a young lady in the next 10, 20 years. It says, while it is day, for the night comet when no man can walk again. Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 15 to 17. Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. Paul is mentoring the church in Ephesus and he says, See then that ye walk circumspectly. The word circumspect is accurately, as, as wise, not as fools, but as wise. He says, Redeeming the time. What does it mean to redeem? To redeem means to buy back using something in exchange. Listen carefully. To redeem means to buy back using something else in exchange. It says redeem the time because the days are evil. It says therefore be ye not unwise but understanding what the Lord's will is. Listen, when I learned this principle my life changed. There are many people who do not understand their days of visitation. Do you know, imagine the woman in Luke chapter 18. Imagine that on the day Jesus came, she was not in church. She would have missed that season forever. It was because she was present. Are we together? The Bible talks about a man who was so crippled, his friends understood that Jesus being within his vicinity was a kairos moment. They would not take no for an answer. The Bible says they were so determined to see him healed, they tore the roof and brought him in. In other words, we will negotiate with the owner of this house later. But as for now, we know it is not easy to get Jesus. How many people can heal? How many people can cast out devils? We have discernment. This man is the son of the living God. And what Whatever price we will pay, we will discuss the casualties later. But as for now, let a man's destiny change first. The woman with the issue of blood. I hope you know in one of the synoptic accounts, Jesus was on his way to Centurion's house to honor him. He said, I will heal your daughter who had died. The day that daughter was born, that was the day the woman's issue started. They were all 12 years old. So the woman said, listen, you have pain. You've lost a 12-year-old daughter. I sympathize with you. But the day she was born was the day my own trouble started too. 
And the Bible says, she said, if I may but touch, I will never have that chance again. Now that I have this moment, I know that it, the Bible says she said to herself, Kronos, we don't know how long she kept rehearsing what she would do. But we know that when Jesus came to pass, she said, I will face the consequences later on. But this is a moment I cannot afford to miss. And the Bible says she touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus said, who touched me? The disciples said, no, you are, you are speaking unwise. Many people are all over you. said, no, there is a woman who has maximized her, her kairos. This woman understood. She, virtue has flowed out of me. Read the Bible. Those who prepared for this moment were never disappointed. Never disappointed. Those who took it for granted. There were people who met Jesus just once. Did you know blind Bartimaeus? when you study your scripture, Jesus was passing Jericho for the last time. He would never return there again. And blind Bartimaeus understood this. And he said, thou son of David, could this be my moment today? Have mercy on me. And wicked people whose eyes were seen, they said, keep quiet. Beware of those who encourage you to waste your Kairos moment. They may not be there to face the consequences of your aborting time and destiny. The Bible says he cried yet the more. And Jesus stopped and said, what would I do? And he says that my eyes be opened. And he touched him and that was it. Hallelujah. There are many people who miss opportunities to rise even in life within the cosmos because they did not understand the power of timing. The Holy Spirit kept prompting you, go and greet your uncle. He does not come into worry every day, but now he's around and he's even around for one week. That greeting would have given you the capital you needed to start business. That greeting would have opened you up to a very new and strange and prophetic season, but by procrastination and carelessness and lack of discernment you allowed certain seasons happen there are many men of God the mantle upon your destiny was in the hands of careers but the day they were around you were careless he did is any day is he not this man of God I will meet him one day I will meet him somewhere I know how I will meet him times and seasons I can tell you stories upon stories in my life where I took advantage of certain moments that if I did not take advantage of those moments, it would take the mercy of God for me to draw back the blessings that were connected to that moment. Hallelujah. All the sons of the prophet were careless. After all, Elijah is a prophet. He knows we will eventually receive the mantle. Elisha said, no, I'm seeing the body language of this man. He's living. I will not go. I will follow you from Gilgal down to Jordan. And he said, leave me. Say, I'm not going anywhere. Jacob was careless about this Kairos moment. In Genesis 28, the Bible says he lay down in loss to sleep. And he saw a ladder that connected the heavens and the earth. Am I right on that? And the Bible says, he even said the Lord was in this place. And I knew not. Do you know the consequence of missing that season was a total period of 20 years of misery in his life. In the house of Laban. For missing that season. The next opportunity would come after 20 plus years. Now in Genesis 32, the Bible says he dismissed his wives. He dismissed his cattle when he was alone. He said, this time I will not miss it. Suddenly a stranger comes and he holds on to him. He said, leave me for the day break it. After my 20 years of carelessness, I have learned by experience the value of your presence. He said, I will not leave you. I will not let you go unless you bless me. The name Israel was not given as a gift. It was a man's maximizing a Kairos moment. Hallelujah. A Kairos moment. I will not let you go until you bless me. 
What is your name? I am Jacob. Thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have had power with God and you have prevailed. He touched the hole of his tie and the Bible says he blessed him there and the sun arose. He called the name of that place Peniel. For I have met God face to face and my life is preserved. Many of you today, whilst I'm speaking, if you are to be honest with yourself, you will see certain seasons where some anointings would have come upon your life if only you were determined. You heard about a meeting that was happening and it was so close to you, but the discipline to get up and wait there and you thought by next week you will meet that man. Then you heard the man is now dead. How many of you had an opportunity to see Reinhard Bonke? You said one day. How many of you had an opportunity to pursue certain mantles, certain graces, and you gave all kinds of flimsy excuses? How many of you had the opportunity to go for certain trainings that will cause you to rise? You didn't know that there was an age restriction. You said any year, after three years, now when you were ready, they said you are too old for it. Listen, let me tell you. The, one of the greatest manifestations of wisdom in your life is to know that every time does not fit for everything. When you buy a product, there's something they write at the bottom or at the side of it, best before. Everybody say best before. One more time, say best before. That means to get the most of this product, this is the time period you are allowed to consume this product. If you attempt to consume this product outside of this time range, it is at your, you are at risk. You will not get the best and you will not get the most. Hallelujah. I know that at any period is, is better late than never. But do you know someone who gets born again at 15 years and another person who gets born again at 60 years do not tell me they have the same advantage. In Christ they do. But one person has the luxury and the advantage of time. Are we together now? The 60 year old man, by the time you say you want to lock yourself for three days, your child's school fees issue will bring you out of that fasting period. Am I right on that? The young man can afford to stretch that much because he still has the privilege most likely of being under his parents. Prophetic timings are very, very important. Many of us have missed seasons. Many of us have missed moments. Many of us have missed mantles and graces. Many of us have missed prophetic connections that would have served as a leverage for us. Thou shall arise and have mercy. You see why mercy is in the equation? Because without mercy, that, that, the issue of maximizing time cannot be possible. Time. Time. Read your Bible and watch people who missed out on prophetic moments. Prophetic moments. The woman at the well, that was a Kairos moment. She did not waste it at all. The madman in Gadara, that was a Kairos moment. He did not waste it at all. Unfortunately, there were people who were around Jesus' crusade. They ate bread, they watched miracles, but they were never transformed. Because to them, it was like every other day. Woe betides the student who gets up and finds out that tomorrow is Wayek and he's not been reading. Now you see, the way Kairos and Kronos works is, listen, Kronos is the gift God gives you to prepare for Kairos. That means every day counts. Your maximizing opportune moments is a product of your preparedness. Are we together now? The day that God will line up your destiny help as man of God and now give you the mic and you have the opportunity to preach or pray and that now opens a new door to your ministry. That manifestation will not just happen that day. It will be a summation of years and months of preparedness. Am I right on that? I think it was BJ Sachs when I, I, we in the office and he was, he was the one pastor, he was ministering. And I nodded my head, I said, oh, this gentleman is so anointed, 
I mean, I was, I was watching how excellent they were. Now, you will say he's lucky or you will say it's God's grace. That is the language of mediocre and respectfully speaking, very foolish people who do not understand that what happens, God can open a door now. Someone can see this gentleman and say, you know what, come. There is somebody I want to introduce you to and that becomes a new season. Whereas someone who has been praying and fasting does not know. Listen, according to the law of time and chance, everybody on earth must have a Kairos moment. It is not a prayer point. In God's justice system, he programmed it that provided you are alive based on the law of time and chance it's a time and chance happened to them all that means one day your destiny helper will pass you one day the mantle you are looking for will pass you whether you have trained yourself to discern it or not will mean you continuing in that realm or rising to a higher realm man of god you are trusting that god will announce you as a worshiper are you preparing for that Kairos moment? Moving around with your invitation card is nonsense. That's not how to prepare for Kairos. Show me the songs you have written that you trust God will grant you to sing to the nations. Show me your consecration and your prayer and your fasting. Show me the rehearsals. Show me the discipline of waking up in the morning. Show me what you are learning about relationships. Show me what you are learning about leadership and management. Show me the them you are following who through faith and patience. And I will tell you, you are maximizing that season. In. listen wishing for the day of opportunity is a waste of your time it will come preparing for it is how to maximize it hallelujah am i right on that so a young man is in the prison and he even refuses to bother about himself do you know why because he knew that with time, one day an opportunity will come for him to vindicate himself. And rather than bothering about himself, he was studying the countenance of his fellow prisoners, the man called Joseph. And he said, wine presser, you don't seem happy. Baker, you don't seem happy. Both of them said, we've had dreams. An opportunity to file his gift. An opportunity to refine his gift. He said, tell me your dreams for free at no charge. Talk to me. And they began to speak. You do not learn when you stand before kings. You learn in the wilderness. The presence of kings is not the place for rehearsal. It is the place for manifestation. Unfortunately, there are many people who keep praying and wishing, Oh God, bring the kings who will lift me. When they come, you are, when you do trial and error, you recycle seasons of pain. The stage is not for learners. The wilderness is for learners. Everybody God trains, he takes to the wilderness. John the Baptist, Moses, even Jesus. The stage is a testament of mastery. That you have worked with your chronos and you have built yourself. If you understand what I'm teaching you tonight, listen to me. It will be impossible for you to not arise. Man of God, moving around with your CV and saying, oh, which, who is the senator now? Who is the house member now? It may not be a wise thing. Go and file yourself. Those who are running after greatness, listen to me. Those who are running after greatness, chasing it around, will never find it. Because that greatness is looking for certain kind of people. Become that person that greatness is looking for. Hallelujah. So the lady is quietly somewhere preparing, knowing that one day God has put the spirit of worship within my spirit and the nations will hear me sing. I don't have any human connection, but one thing I know is that there is a Kairos moment. I will use my chronos every day, the seconds, the hour, the minute, while other people are gossiping, backbiting, ill-wishing those who are manifesting. There is a young lady preparing and saying, Lord, I know you have called me to sing your praises to the nations. I may not have an uncle, a a father a mother but you be my witness as i train while others are sleeping she's maximizing chronos writing songs praying in the spirit fasting building herself going for trainings if need be i assure you by god's integrity you are watching a champion forming because one day 
Someone will just say, we're about to round up. I hear you sing. Leave that one. The connection is God's own ministry. It's none of your business how it will happen. Are we together? Young lady, come. It looks like a coincidence, but you just called someone who has been training for one year and that lady will hold that mic in five minutes and you see God will position all her destiny helpers. Someone hears her and said, I just had something I've been looking for. What did you say your name is? Her limitations no longer become an issue. See me tomorrow. And you see that lady in one church. You see that lady in one program. And in two, three, four days, God lives. And people say, you were so lucky. No, 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 no. So let me use this dear man, BJ Sax again. I don't play the saxophone. But trust me, I know that that thing is not very, it's not easy. You try it. I can borrow it from him and give you now. As anointed as you are, you blow that thing and the first thing that will happen, you will need to see a doctor because there is a skill. I've watched my dear friend and brother, Pastor Nat, play the trumpet and sometimes I'm like this man. You play that thing, your cheeks, you know how someone who has mumps, there's something called mumps, where your cheeks just becomes enlarged. There is a skill. You see, when you watch masters manifest, you are seeing a testament of the wise use of their chronos. It is so effortless. You will be mistaken to think. The Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. Man of God, the stage is not where you come and quote wrong verses and say things you did not study and say, um, I know I researched it, but I'm not sure. Go back to the wilderness. The wilderness is the place of training. Use the stones as your audience. Use nature as your audience. File yourself. You are preparing based on the law of time and chance. I assure you by the integrity of God, your day will come. The Kairos moment will come. Someone will call you and say, help us wrap up this prayer. Five minutes. All that you will say in that meeting is, let us pray. That's the beginning of your manifestation. Someone will say, who is this brother? Next week, you will be the one to lead opening prayer. Someone will say, be the head of the prayer group. And then before you know it, after three years, here is a great man of God. Again, the language of mediocres. He is so lucky. Businessman, I'm into real estate. Is that true? What and what do you know about real estate? I have one land my elder brother gave me to sell. That is not real estate. Nobody will call you that way. Go back and settle down. Avoid, listen, I'm speaking to you from my heart. Run away from premature manifestation. Use your days. Don't lobby for visibility. Go back to the backside of the mountain. It is God who brings men from the back to the front. There is a law. The Bible says when you enter a house, sit at the back. It's a principle. Sit at the back. Let your competence meet. Hallelujah. Thank you. Are we together? Let your competence mix with timing bring you to the front. But if you decide to come and sit in the front, because you know those who are sitting in the front, sooner or later your lack of preparedness will take you to the back and that in shame. And you see, human beings are very unforgiving. When you waste your Kairos moment, they mark you as a failure. Even when you train yourself, it will take grace for you to be elevated. Is someone listening? So whether you are a preacher, whether you are a businessman, I bring you a message that the dealings of God with men, please listen. It looks like certain people seem to be exceptional. No, the same Lord is rich unto all. The difference is while others are discussing greatness, while others are wishing greatness, coveting greatness in ignorance, there are others who know that life is an interplay between Kronos and Kairos. Apostle, why are my songs not getting to the nations? I have an answer for you. Show me what you are doing with your chronos. When you wake up in the morning and give God five minutes, give your destiny ten minutes, give the most valuable people in your life 
15 minutes, then give mundane things the whole day. How do you become a champion that way? There is no superstition with God. Do not forget that righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. Because of systems of advantage like favor, listen carefully, mercy, many believers become lazy and irresponsible as to maximizing these seasons. They magically believe that just because they are saved, they are born again, God will veto these principles and suddenly make them emerge. No, sir. No, sir. Apostle, there's an attack on my life. I'm a tailor and uh, the people I know that I can sew for anybody. <clears throat> so who has called you now? Nobody. All right. What are you doing now? Recycling your current level or improving to a point that the day one king calls you, all his circle of friends, you become their tailor, all of them together. Can I tell you? I want you to make a vow that you will never enter the palace and have to be sent out again. Joseph made that commitment. In his pain, he did not allow offense to destroy him. He was building himself. Something tells me I am the prime minister. There's no way I can prove it. But I know. And he kept preparing. The Bible says, I love the Lord. He now says that Pharaoh had a dream. He had a dream and God shut the heavens over all the sorcerers. Nobody could see and know. And then the wine presser said, I remember my wrong this day. There was such and such a man. And they said, go and bring him. Your Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph. And they brought him out of his dungeon. Am I right on that? And when they brought him out, when he stood before Pharaoh, he shaved himself with the confidence of one who was ready for Kairos. Pharaoh, tell me your dream. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Look at that kind of confidence. And Pharaoh began to give all his dream. And I can imagine Joseph with quietness watching. And all the necromancers with their pride, hoping that he will say, I'm sorry, I, I don't know the answer. Joseph laughed. He said, I found the answer. All your dreams, whether they are cows or wheat, they all mean the same thing, seven years. And then when he said everything, he said, let me give you a further solution. Let the king find a man. Another way of saying, I dare you to search if you will get somebody like me. It was a polite way of daring him. Let the king find a man, discreet and wise. Set him over the economic operations of Egypt. And the king said, can we find such a man? Ladies and gentlemen, in one moment, without an interview, he said, I am Pharaoh, and only in the throne will I be greater than you. The Bible says they called him, they gave him treasures. Are we together? They gave him all kinds of names. And the Bible says that they put a signet ring upon his hand, and then he had an opportunity to marry Potiphera, the daughter of the priest of On. That was his blessing. How about David, the young boy? When he killed the lion, there was nobody to clap for him. When he killed the bear, he did not know that it was adding up in the spirit. One day, he was sent to go and feed his brothers. The same way you were sent to come for this program. You did not know you may just be one day left to your manifestation. One day left to your Kairos moment. And the young teenager stands and he's watching the armies of Israel. With all their dexterity and experience, a beast is barking and all of them are in fear. And Joseph said, no, no, this is not Israel. He said, please, can you give me a chance to take on this man? They said, young boy, get out of here. And eventually he went to Saul. And Saul said, whose son are you? That's what I want to know. I want to know the covenant that backs you, that gives you the audacity to stand before him and he began to tell him a story once upon a time i was in the bush and a lion came i toyed a bear came i toyed saul said all right if you choose we'll give you but take my armory and when he tried it he said no i was not trained with this leave me with my sling what he trained me with in the wilderness is what i will use when i stand before pharaoh are we together now yes when he stood before Goliath, I meant to say, he stood before Goliath. Goliath was angry. He felt insulted. He said, am I a dog? 
I will kill this boy, but is this your best Israel? And David stood with confidence. Something always happens to you when you maximize the seasons of trailing. Mastery erodes fear. You can stand with confidence. Confidence that until your manifestation, only you can understand. And he stood before him. Is someone getting blessed? And he said, listen, Goliath, I will not only kill you. Let me tell you how you will die. I will use my sling on you. When you fall, I will use your own sword and take off your head and give it to the birds. You come against me with your bows and your spears, but I come against you in a name. Goliath died before he died. He died from the confidence of David. With one sling. Do you know, I've studied that scripture. David comes from the Benjamites. They said they were masters at flinging these slings. They could diverge arrows. That you shoot an arrow and they will use a sling to diverge it. So don't just think he was anointing. Mastery. Mastery. I will not waste this opportunity. And with one sling, he got Goliath down. And they began to sing. Women caused him trouble. Saul killed 1,000. David killed 10,000. And David said, I will kill this boy. I don't know where this boy is coming from. Let me prophesy over someone tonight. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. I don't know what seasons you have aborted through carelessness and lack of discernment. But I call upon the God of mercy tonight. May he restore these Kairos moments for you. May he restore these Kairos moments for you. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down. Let me give you two principles. You want to maximize Kairos moments. I will just give you two principles and then we'll pray. If you're still with me, say amen. amen. Number one, the first key to maximizing prophetic seasons is to understand and to discern the times. You will need discernment. Discernment is the spiritual faculty of perception. You, you must walk with God to know. Listen, there are many things that happen to you when seasons are changing. Can I give you four of them? Maybe just quickly for your knowledge. Listen to me. Every time you come to the end of a season and another season is opening, these four things happen to you. Number one, an unusual desire to pray. It is a strategy that God puts within your spirit so that you will translate those seasons accurately. Number one, an unusual desire to pray. Number two, an unusual desire to give, to give sacrificially. You will never translate prophetic seasons without God making a strong demand upon your life. Abraham, take now thy son. A season is about to open thine only son whom thou lovest. An unusual desire to pray an unusual desire to give. Are you ready? When seasons are about to change in your life, there are unusual demonic attacks. Because the realm of the spirit, they may not understand, but they see unusual angelic activities. What is going on around the life of this man? And demons are wise enough to know that every time you see angels around a man, around a business, around a church, it's a signification that a season is about to end. When Satan saw unusual angels around Jesus while he was praying and fasting, Satan came and waited at the wilderness patiently. The Bible says that angels came and ministered to him. An unusual desire to pray. An unusual desire to give. An unusual attack. And then number four. Can I tell you what the fourth key is? When a season is about to change, you will not have the passion to be around people again. There will be an unusual drawing. God will now begin to draw you to intense seasons of consecration. You will find out that sometimes, even around your husband or your wife, you don't even want to be around anybody because there are things only, it is, it is between you and God. He wants to open up to you a new blueprint. I'm saying this because with these indicators, someone is now seeing 
that I am actually ending a season in my life and starting another one. So this desire to pray, I am always prayerful. But what is this desire to pray? And then this unusual desire to give. And then this demonic attack. It looks like everybody around me is now fighting me. Don't fight them back. You are wasting your time. These are, these are demonic orchestrations to distract your focus. Have you noticed that there are times when you spend time in the presence of God. As you come out, everything is offending you. Everybody is offending you. It's a strategy to distract you. Remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Mm -mm. Is someone learning? You must learn to discern times. The Bible says he made the lights, the stars... To signify times and seasons. That means there are lights that signify times. I wish I had the time I would have told you stories upon stories in my own life. When I knew that certain seasons were coming to an end. Woe betides a man who cannot discern. And a new season just comes to pass you. And you do not even know like Jacob. Mm -mm. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. One of the keys to training your discernment is to commit to the ministry of prayer and the word. Listen, believers, don't waste tonight. I know we will praise. I know we will sing. But it is important for you to know. The Bible says there is, as it were, many voices. And none of them is without signification. Do you know for someone... One of the music ministers will come up here and they will raise a song that everybody will be dancing with. But to you, it is a sign. That song will be that this is the sign. By this sign, it's telling you that a new season is opening up. Most believers in church are not discerning. We just come and jump around and go back and season. And the realm of the spirit is trying to notify you. Woman of God, the mantle is about to start speaking. Do you not know that grace to pray? Shut down on everything and go back for two or three days of fasting and prayer. Lord, what are you saying? Then the blueprint for the ministry comes. What are you saying? Proverbs 18 and verse 1 says, Through desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. All wisdom. All wisdom. All wisdom. One instruction will come. I have anointed you this day. Sing my praises to the nations. Uh, that's it. You can come out and say, oh, so this is it. That means the grace is upon my life. Man of God, don't assume it is time for you to start ministry. Don't assume it is time for you to start preaching. Can I tell you, when God wants to lift you next week, Satan will bring you a proposal now. Not every open door is of God. Even the prison has a door. So when a door is open, verify where you are entering. You can, a door can be open and you will enter thinking it's breakthrough. Only to find out you shot yourself in a prison. Can I tell you? The unbecoming of believers in these end times will be assumption and presumption. Never assume there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Lord, should I pursue? Especially when great doors begin to open. Don't be in a hurry. My father, you are the one who lifts me. Speak to me. If I do not hear your voice, I'm not taking a step. Some trust in horses and chariots, but we trust in the name of our God. I have potentials to open five and ten branches, you may be saying, in worry as a pastor. But Lord, is it your will? Don't say everybody is doing it. No. Listen, I am praying that by this meeting tonight, that God will plant upon someone the grace. There is something called inquiry prayer. 
Inquiry prayer is not give me tea, give me bread. We are talking about prayers that connect to Kairos moments. Should I pursue? And if his voice does not come, you stay there. Shamakato sabiata. Sometimes, listen, let me challenge you, especially I know that there are lots of worship ministers here. Let me speak to you by the Spirit. Every time you are alone with God, listen very carefully because in His voice will come melodies that one song that comes from the secret place, one song can announce you and give you global visibility beyond your imagination. There are songs that do not die because they did not come from the earth realm. There are songs that as soon as you are hearing it, as the person is going back to his seat, the song is dying as you are clapping. Because it was just human manipulation, but there are songs that are deep in the spirit. Man of God, could tonight be the moment where God wants you to encounter grace? You want to arise? It will not happen because you have stayed long. Mm -mm. You have been wasting your chronos. For some of you, you are one week left to step into your Kairos moment. Imagine a student who has not been reading and now has one week to write the final exams. It's going to take the grace of God. That's why the Bible says, Thou shall arise and have mercy. 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 The Lord was in this place and I knew not. Tonight you will hear the trumpet. You will hear the saxophone. You will hear singing. You will hear worship. I pray that it will not just be a special number or celebrities ministering. That in the midst of the sounds you will hear your own sound. Hmm. The sound that is connected to the anointing upon your life. The sound that will open you up to new dimensions. The sound that will birth something within your spirit. Businessman, did you know that you can stay with God and you just hear one, one instruction from God and you go and do exactly what he asks you to do and you will create transgenerational wealth that will outlive you to the third and the fourth generation. Hallelujah. Yes. Apostle, my own is anointing. When will it come? God will never call you without empowering you. But the key is to continue to learn and build. Because the oil will always assume the shape of the vessel. If the vessel is small, it will make the oil look small. So while you are waiting for the oil, go and borrow vessels. Don't borrow oil, but borrow vessels. Enlarge your capacity. It says, borrow not a few. Man of God, you want to be a prophet to the nations with the trial and error that you have now? God cannot trust destinies to your hands like that. Can you speak the purposes of God to nations? With audacity and power, go and stay with him. Let him walk upon you. Let him purge you. Let him build you. Let him anoint you. Listen, there is no power in existence. Not when you understand the interplay of Kronos and Kairos. We're going to find a place to pray. Hallelujah. I thank God today for certain seasons I was able to maximize in my life. Seasons that came by instruction. Certain seasons, certain fastings, certain prayers, certain books, certain men. Things that may not make sense. Some of you, God can give you an instruction in the night. I'm talking of discernment. Just walk around your living room praying in the spirit. I will come to you. It may not make sense. You just obey. That's why the Bible says that the kingdom is for people who are childlike. And you are going around. One hour, two hours. Lord, what are you saying? I'm just walking around my parlor. And then the spirit of God comes to you. And he says, now get a Bible and a paper. Start writing. Man of God, 
every time you stand before the people kneel before me and I will honor that meeting that becomes your strategy somebody would do it and it will not work because it was not a covenant so you see certain people do certain things and you see it work wonders and you try to copy because it did not come by revelation and absolutely nothing works for you I dread taking any step that was not sponsored by the voice of God I have seen the value of discernment for some of you you have rushed seasons that God has no business in you need to retrace your step tonight to say Lord I want to start afresh I was angry because all my colleagues were in ministry and I felt I don't want anybody to disrespect me. So I started a small prayer group. And you see how you are suffering as if God is not alive? Because that you cannot secure a divine backing over something that was carnal and mundane. Discernment. Let me give you the second and we'll pray. Is God speaking to someone tonight? The second thing you need to do is to obtain grace to take prompt action. Prompt action. We maximize seasons when we take prompt action. Listen, when God has not spoken, when you do not understand the direction, you wait. But when his voice comes and he gives you the green light, procrastination may mean the difference between you and the next season I taught you John chapter 5 the pool of Bethesda can you imagine that man was lying down close to the pool one year became five years five years became ten years ten years became 15 I'm sure someone will come to visit that pool and say my friend you are still here he says yes remember I came after you and now I've left and you are still here next year i will try it do you know if jesus did not help that man he would have died there being around a miracle does not bring a miracle it means you are closer to a miracle it is your action of obedience action of obedience when god says give give immediately can i tell you in this kingdom you strike when the iron is hot because when you come back to the realm of the flesh the instruction god gave that made sense as that when you were with him in the secret place will no longer make sense again so it is wise to take steps quickly before the devil comes to cheat you hallelujah Action. many people have missed on their days of visitation because they do not know what action to take oh for instance give Jesus a shout of praise and you've been struggling with something some growth is there and that was the prophetic instruction you just felt these musicians like shouting Jare I'm tired of all this nonsense I've been shouting <coughs> that shout would have been the shout that brings out that tumor forever because it looked to you like an ordinary shout except that there was a covenant that was backing that statement whatever he tells you to do Mary said do it and guess the instruction fill six pots with water and then fetch without verifying whether it has become wine you are not allowed to taste it start going to the rulers how many of you can take that kind of risk the rulers are waiting and then you are saying sir wine is coming and then you fetch water and literally they could jail you and kill you but that is the power of obedience the signs don't go before the signs follow you must take steps of faith this sign shall follow this sign shall follow. He didn't say this sign shall go with. It is the Lord that goes with. The signs follow as proof that you have taken steps of faith. Hallelujah. I remember one time, two testimonies and we pray. I was praying in the spirit, preparing and then the Lord brought me this scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded this day that the Lord your God will set thee on high above how many nations? 
all the nations of the earth. He says, and this blessing shall come upon thee and shall overtake thee. These were the words that God brought to me. And from that situation, that lowly estate, would I believe this? I said, Lord, I believe you. It may not make sense, but if this is your prophetic destiny for me, then I believe. And whatever step it will take, and whatever price I will pay, in partnership with your grace, and in partnership with prophetic timings, I obtain that grace. Can I tell you the truth? When God speaks to you, Ba, believe that he's not playing with you. I hope you know if God said it, it does not guarantee that it will happen. It depends on your believing. It depends on your participating through obedience. They heard the word just like we did. It says the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So the sons of Issachar, that they had an understanding of the times, then to know what Israel ought to do. And the Bible says their brethren were at their command. One time the Lord spoke to me and said that you will not only raise people who are spiritual, you will raise kings and people of influence. And he gave me the scripture, Genesis chapter 17 and verse 6. This was the scripture he gave me. Please give it to us. Genesis 17 verse 6. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings will come out of you. You will not draw kings to come, they will come out of you. I believed him I believed him what has he told you have you discerned seasons in your life did you know that your chronos is a gift by God from God to prepare for those kairos moments apostle has been 10 years without a child I know I understand but what are you doing do you not know that every time there was delay in childbirth in the Bible the child that came always became a covenant child and a prophet so while you are waiting are you preparing for Samuel are you preparing to to raise John the Baptist was Samuel an ordinary child was John the prophet an ordinary child so your 10 years delay rather than just crying in lamentation alone you go to the word and say what happened to all the women who had delays that the children who came were prophetic children so lord whilst i am waiting i begin to build myself in the similitude of elizabeth i build myself in the similitude of hannah to hand over samuel back to you because samuel becomes that prophet who will ordain the kings in israel Listen, let me speak to someone. Stop crying about the days you anticipate to come. Start preparing for them because they will come. Unfortunately, they will not come in a way that you will see easily. Jesus said, you use the weather, paraphrasing, to know that after four months, then come the harvest. That means the harvest never takes you by surprise. I have put times and seasons for you to know. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. When I found this key, I vowed that I will never miss out on prophetic seasons in my life. The key is not to look for them. The key is to prepare while I trust the Lord God of heaven to connect me. So I prepare in prayer. I prepare in fasting. I prepare in building. I prepare in learning. That the things that I do not know, because the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 2, it says, and if any man think that he knoweth anything, it says, let him know that he does not know as he ought to know. He knows nothing yet as he ought to know. So Joshua Selman, there are many things you do not yet know. And you humble yourself to learn. Because the Bible says to receive with meekness the engrafted word. You don't receive with pride. You don't receive with a sense of a, a, an arrival mentality. Are we together? You are here tonight. Many of you have labored. Some of you are standing. I saw so many people outside. And to others, it may not make sense. What is so special about this meeting that you are outside in the cold, you are outside in the rain, anybody who laughs at you, remind them that you are using your chronos 
to prepare for Kairos. Why do you serve in church like a fool? They are not paying you. They are using you. You tell them, no, no, no. It's a track record. It always starts with serving tables, but I will end up a mighty man. Is someone learning? How come you are serving God? Nobody has told you thank you. Some of you have heard my story. Many years ago, I used to carry my own keyboard, pastor, and trek from my house to go and play a keyboard for one man who, you know, he, he was using a hotel. He just started ministry. From church, I will return and go back, carry my own small keyboard and take there and I will play that keyboard. Nobody ever told me thank you. The only thing I got one day was one cassette and one Fanta. When he was launching his cassette, then it, there was nothing like CD, his cassette. One cassette was given to me as a gift and then they were sharing drinks and they gave me minerals. Who would have known that that little boy playing keyboard would be sent to the nations? Who would have known that that usher here at this church who is always sweeping this church? Can I tell you, every door God opens for you is not the real door he wants to open. That is so a test to see what you do. Uh, if God makes you an usher, it is truly not an usher that you will remain. There is a transition in the spirit. The Bible says, moreover, it is required in men. I do not know anyone God is using across the nation today who cannot tell you a track record of painful seasons where their work and their labor did not make sense. Do not think, the Bible says, though the vision tarries, the hardest thing for a believer to do is to wait. When these seasons, do you know, the connection from Kronos to Kairos, I'm wrapping up now. Man of God, wait. I know you are feeling cheated. That anointing you have is boiling. You have Greek and Hebrew you want to preach. Don't worry. When the seasons open, you will preach and be tired and not know what part of the Bible to read again. You just be patient. Keep preparing the sermons. There are enough sinners to exhaust your sermon. Be patient. Pouring seasons unnecessary will only waste your time. He says, eat for the journey is far. He ate a little and he laid down. The angel tapped him. I know where you are going. Keep eating. Prophet, eat. Man of God, eat. A day will come you will need to have stamina. I just returned from a trip as I'm standing jumping like this. Because you see, through experience and by the election of grace, he has trained us to know how to draw the strength of the spirit. Even when your physical strength is, you cannot fake some things. You will just die. Let me tell you, there are people, this wanting announcement, in two weeks of travel, you will return back and a doctor will have to say, just leave ministry. Because you have not trained your spirit man. It says, though our outer, our outer man perish, but that the inner man is renewed. Have you learned how to tap supernatural strength? Lord, I must do the ministry. Now God opens it and you have ministrations back to back. And then you break down. You become a reproach to God because of lack of preparedness. Someone, this is a prophetic word for you. The call of God upon your life is not a lie. But allow seasons to bring you. Wait. And while waiting, serve. And while serving, pray. And while praying, fast. And while fasting, study. Mm, yes, sir. The kind of mantle that is coming upon you is a very delicate mantle. Watch those who carry the mantle. Study their mistakes and learn. Don't just smile and be debating. If you are Elijah, Jezebel is coming after you. So just be, be, while you are shouting, give me Elijah's, you better know what to do with Jezebel. Because Jezebel does not follow men, she follows Elijah's. So when that mantle comes upon you, I know I am a Samson to my generation. Tell me what you are going to do with Delilah. There are spirits that don't follow men, they follow mantles. I am a kingdom financier. Is that true? Have you studied about the king of Tyre? The one who sits upon that mountain. He took Jesus and said, bow to me and I will give you the whole world and the glory. What shall it profit a man, he says. So when God is training you to be that financial apostle, just when you buy the car and you make the first 10 million, God will say, give the car 
and the 10 million. You will bind and cast his voice, thinking he was a demon. And he says, it's not about the car. I'm revealing to you that the loss that still resides within you cannot make you my treasurer. My last treasurer disappointed me. I'm looking for who I can train and still trust with the resources of the kingdom. There are many believers claiming things in church and not knowing that every day that passes is a gift to prepare for your destiny. David, stay and kill the lions. No applause, but stay. Stay and kill the bear. David, stay until you become king. Joseph, stay until you become prime minister. Esther, forget that you are a village girl. Your destiny is in the palace. So prepare yourself. Mary, you are going to be carrying Jesus. So be careful. Something happens to your life, you will not be able to carry Jesus. Who is God speaking to? Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along? eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest will you show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter. We're about to pray. I came tonight for the sake of a great man of God who has a prophetic destiny even here in worry. The Lord put this meeting because of the next sets of prophetic worshippers that may be here scattered in the crowd you remind me of myself years ago i was in a reinhardt bunker crusade i was already a man of god but i went and like the crowd that i saw outside i was somewhere locked in the crowd as i watched that great man you are seated but i was standing i stood for six hours reinhardt bunker preached because there were certain graces i was truly looking for and you see, every time you do not have the oil, you go to them that sell and buy. There are always them that sell. You buy with hunger. You buy with humility. You buy with meekness. These are the currencies that purchase spiritual things. I stood on that ground and he preached a very simple sermon you may have heard me say. Respectfully speaking, annoyingly simple. A story that, you know, very basic and elementary and when he was done he was going to take a cup of water to minister the baptism and i did not know that standing on that crusade ground was my kairos moment the first day came and passed wonderful miracles by the second day i prayed and fasted i said lord i honor you and i honor this man you have raised an ordinary man and given africa to his hands there must have been a grace it's not by his oratory it's not just by some charisma very simple man but mightily grace what did you put upon his life i was wheeling people from wheelchairs you know they were there was a section they were pushing those who were sick and I pleaded I said can I join they said no I was not you know I'm not in the committee I said committee or not I must walk I came here I traveled and I came to receive something desperation I knew that it was a season as I was pushing those people I remember what I was saying I said Lord this is how it will be in my meetings too in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ yes and I watched tremendous miracles. But that was not the high point. Ladies and gentlemen, like those who are inside and outside, I was watching. And all of a sudden, I was taken over by a vision. A large, giant bird. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit that I was seeing visibly. Was not flying. Was soaring over that crusade ground. White in its brilliance. Tied something around the wings. Silvery was just moving and the spirit of God took me to Genesis 1 and verse 2 and the spirit hovered round the face of the waters for me it's not just a scripture I read it came as a revelation 
And he told me the union of the move of the spirit and the spoken word is what births the miraculous. Do you know when I came back to myself, I had backed the stage. I didn't even know when I had turned. That was a Kairos moment. Imagine if I said, after all, he's a preacher, I'm a preacher. The pride of many. He's a singer, I'm a singer. He's my younger brother. He's my elder brother. Listen, be delivered tonight. If you have that mindset, I cast that spirit out of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus came to a place where they knew him. This is the reason why when God wants to raise mighty men, he takes them away from those who know them. Because those who know you will never allow men celebrate the unique gift of God within you so God will take you out of their presence until you now return in power and glory then he will reintroduce you to them <laughs> hallelujah tonight let me tell you sincerely worry and champions cathedral you are truly truly a blessed and a fortunate people to have the caliber of people and voices that God has allowed to be ministering to you. You see, when you see people look beyond the gift, look at the, every altar that stands here, there is blood dripping on that altar. A testament of sacrifice. You don't get carried away by some of these you know, glitz and glamour and think that people are just entertainers. No, there are people you do not know the pain and the sacrifices. There are people because of their work with God, God left them with a token of promise that every time they stand to sing or to minister, there must be a deposit of something from heaven. My question is, can tonight be your Kairos moment? Can it be the moment that you say, I've been attending seven days of glory for many years, but now I came with a determination that as I hear the sound of worship, as I hear the word, my heart is open to receive. If that is you, then I congratulate you in advance because years from now, weeks from now, months from now, you will be celebrating this day and someday you will stand before people and while you are explaining to them the mystery behind the hand of God upon your life you will recall these moments and tell them I learned about the opportune time and for those who have aborted certain prophetic seasons God is a God of mercy can I tell you today and tomorrow are gifts from God to remedy yesterday you see, that is the reason why time is tripartite. You can't do anything about yesterday, but you can do something with today that will correct and reflect your correction in tomorrow. Every time you wake up in the morning, see your waking up as an expression of God's mercy that there is hope for you. Forget about yesterday. Remember ye not the former things the Bible says, nor consider it says for behold see the word behold means see conceive as a reality in your spirit i do a new thing we have to pray whilst we stand to pray is it all right if immediately i make the altar call now i think we should strike while the iron is hot am i right on that in fact be seated let me make the altar call first please let me two or three minutes there are people here, listen to me, there's no point cajoling, there's no point playing games, we're not playing some church jamboree. The business of Jesus has to do with your life and your heart. Remember, Jesus says, if thou, he says, for God so loved the world, he was speaking to Nicodemus, that he gave his only begotten son. He says that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, it's a law, but that he should have life everlasting. Verse 18 says, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might through Him be saved. I'm speaking to someone within this auditorium. I'm speaking to someone across all the overflows. And you are saying, Apostle, listening to you, I know by the Spirit that God is calling me to begin a very deep and a profitable relationship beyond church, beyond religion beyond having a form of godliness he calls you into a deeper experience now i don't know how many of you will be allowed to come and stand here but here's what i'm going to request 
the first groups of people who will stand here after I make the call, once the front is exhausted, then I would request that you just move to your LED and just stand there and I would request maybe a counselor or two to just attend to them. But I want to make the altar call. And listen, you have a right to not pay attention to what I'm saying. God gave us that power. You have a right to say, Apostle, I've listening, I've listened to you, uh, but I'm not interested in this your decision. That's fine. But I'm concerned about someone who is seated, knowing that there are destinies connected to you. I'm concerned about somebody who is seated and is saying, Apostle, give me an opportunity. Now don't kneel, stand for space. I will count one to five run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here if you mean business with jesus one let's celebrate them as they come make sure you understand what you are doing come to jesus you are great you do miracles so great There is no one else like you There is no one else like you For you are great You do miracles so great There is no one else like you There is no one come come some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears everyone is given the gift of time listen to me ladies and gentlemen destiny is a function of time everything you give your time to you are giving a part of your life to Jesus calls he beckons on you tonight no matter where you are and that includes those who are following by way of television Jesus is calling Pastor Nat will say, someone is knocking at your door. How true. Jesus said, behold, I stand and I knock at the door of your heart. That if any man will hear my voice and open that door, I will come in and I will sup with him. And he will sup with you. He can give you a new beginning today. Today can be the beginning of a new day. Come to Jesus. I'll still give you a minute or two very quickly. My friend, you are standing for an altar call and you are recording me. Be serious. Drop that phone and concentrate on what we are saying. You see, this is what some of these people do. You are standing on, and don't feel embarrassed. You settle down and receive Jesus Christ into your heart. Huh? Come. Come to Jesus. Shabalakosiata. Whoever told you he does not change men. Read your Bible and watch Saul turn to Paul. Jesus. The Bible says that no other name under heaven is given unto men by which we must be saved. That name. That name. Come. I'm about to pray for you now. For those who are not able to make it in, please may I request that you stand in front of your LEDs and please let me plead with counselors or any of the pastors if there would be at least one pastor. Okay, there are pastors everywhere already. God bless you. Now, for those of you who are in front, I salute you. Thank you for your courage. Some of you are crying. You are doing that which you are doing. It's unto Jesus. Jesus makes men. Jesus builds men. Lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. Thank you. Thank you for not being ashamed. Thank you for not being ashamed. He gives you a new beginning. I plead the blood. 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 The precious blood. I plead the blood. The blood. Eternal saving blood. Ah. I don't have to cry. That is the integrity of the gospel. For he has paid the price. Plead the blood. 
I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, the precious blood. I plead the blood, the blood, eternal saving blood. I don't have to cry. Hallelujah. For Jesus paid the price. All of you lifting your hands, please shout this loud and clear unto Jesus. Say this after me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I declare that I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight I am a child of God amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious ones inside here the many outside and those who are following online even those who will be following by way of rebroadcast. Thank you for leading these many to yourself. The Bible says, as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call you recipients of the life of God. And I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your life. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ. From tonight until forever, you go from glory to glory in Jesus' mighty name. And the church says, Amen. Amen. Now, very quickly, ladies and gentlemen, there's someone waving the counselor placard. May I please request that you just follow this one instruction. As we clap for you, just follow them. They will have a word with you just for a minute or two, and then you will rush back. Can we give them a big God bless you? Please, go ahead. Give them a big God bless you. Is somebody giving them a big God bless you? Oh, 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 you are amazing you are amazing i'm saying that because i'm about to speak over your life finally oh 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 please celebrate my friend and brother pastor nat thank you Please stand on your feet. I'm about to speak over your life. You are amazing. Your love is amazing. Your joy is amazing. Your glory is amazing. Your power is amazing. You make the heavens and the earth by the words of your mouth. hallelujah now i truly i'm not sure it's his time yet but i mean this is this is the beauty of brotherhood and love thank you sir let me even give you a big now since he has come he's going to blow the trumpet for me will that be fine there's just something about prophesying under that unction so he will blow that trumpet and i will speak over your life do you know what that means the blowing of this trumpet and the prophecy means everything buried for as long as it has been buried listen oh yeah bj Sachs, come 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 let me give you a big hug by the way hallelujah 
so there, there are sounds that are going to rise can we do this prophetically for two or three minutes now be very sensitive listen 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 as the sound goes up yours is to open up your heart that everything that is dead everything that is buried and every season that i've wasted by the mercy of god resurrection is about to happen does someone believe that hallelujah yes sir Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted, O ye ancient doors. Shabalako sabadusiata. Rada barato secrete de 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 kasho branda da basha. Rada baro sherete seke parusiata. Hallelujah. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Champions Cathedral, worry, we stand united here on this stage and we decree and declare, we call upon the God of Jeshurun, the one who can help men arise. I prophesy over your life, standing upon the graces here. Every season that you have aborted, may my God restore. May my God restore. May my God restore. May my God restore in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, I decree and declare everything the devil stole that is taken from your life in the name of Jesus, even by the sound of the trumpet, we declare a sevenfold restoration. A sevenfold restoration. A sevenfold restoration. A sevenfold restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Every mantle, every grace, every unction that must rest upon your life in this season, in the name of Jesus, let it come upon you now. As a man of God, as a businessman, as a parent, receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, the Bible says, Why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Anyone who has dug a pit for you, we stand by the God of heaven. Like Haman, they will fall into the pits that they dug. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Arise, shine. Arise, shine. Champions Cathedral, arise, shine. Worry, arise, shine. In the name of Jesus, for the set time for your rising has come. No more going down. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, as Pastor Nat blows the trumpet as God puts in his spirit, I want there to be a sound of rejoicing all over this place in the name of Jesus yes sir